Well, 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 well. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all again. I'm sitting in the kitchen, uh, seeing who's coming online, and so many friends from all around the world. It's amazing. You're all on here. I'm going to hide this a little bit today. So, thanks for coming to day three of these morning warm-ups and practice sessions. I hope, well, I think you've enjoyed them so far. I'm getting some really good feedback. People are feeling energized about practice. Maybe finding one or two uh, solutions to problems that they've had for a long time. We're all creatures of habit. We all do things in the same way. And sometimes we find out actually there was a better way. It's kind of frustrating really, but, and, uh, and we never stop learning. I never stop learning. I'm um, always trying to find better ways to do things more efficient, more beautiful, because we're making music rather than, you know, uh, anything else we do in our life. So, um, yes, great. So lots of things today. You, Some of you may have seen the list of subjects that we're going to talk about. I feel we need two hours today. And, and I was thinking I'm going to have to go really fast. But, you know, the whole purpose of practicing and practicing well is not to rush. That doesn't mean that we're going to be here for two hours and you cancel lunch. But there is uh, a kind of a considered um, way that we should do things that maximize our efficiency. You know, if you're going to clean the house, you probably could do it in eight minutes. If you went madly around spraying everything with a towel, <laughs> say, I've done it. And then you look, uh, I missed that room. Oh, dear, that's terrible. So there's, there's something about doing things in a, in a good way. That means we can build on the success of that on a daily basis, week on week, month on month, etc. So it's competition day today, and uh, I'll talk more about that later. But the information is all on the Euphonium Club page since 10 o'clock this morning. I have lots of questions from you. I have 11 so far. So please don't write any more questions on the little text thing here because I just I won't get around to them today. But by all means write some questions to me or on the page and we'll have a bumper question session tomorrow. I'm not sure if this is straight. Uh, hopefully it's okay. Um, so a little apology. Some of you lost some transmission with the uh, video yesterday. I'm not really sure why, but I have an idea. When I close all the doors here, the Wi-Fi signal becomes a little bit less strong. So I've done some experiments and uh, the doors are open, so if the neighbor's cat walks in and goes meow, it's all part of the show, folks. Um, so hopefully no uh, problems today. So I hope you've got your instrument there. I hope you're not just sitting there and be like, right, come on then, lad. I hope you really want to take part because that's, that's the purpose of this. And thanks for those you've given me feedback that you feel more energized and you've been playing and you're enjoying it like, as Trump would say, like never before. Okay, so we're going to recap on yesterday. Of course, we're going to do some breathing and stretching. I can't emphasize enough that once you master the ability to take big air without stressing your body at all, so many things work better. So many things work better. Okay, um, so we're going to go through those. We're going to do some finger exercises. Check on your double tonguing before we embark on today's new stuff. So, today's breath will start as before. No apologies for repetition. Two in, four out. Two in, six out. Two in, eight out. Four, six, eight. Good posture, good spaces, feeling positive and relaxed. Okay, here we go. If you haven't mastered those big numbers, stay at it. Keep going with it. Keep persevering. Generally speaking, people have a problem with that. <sighs> Let too much air go at the beginning. So here's a challenge, folks. You didn't see this coming. One, twelve. Are you ready? One second in, twelve out. 
start as you mean to go on, okay? Let's go. Isn't it easy? And if you do it every day, it's gonna get better. Change the numbers, have the bigger number in, for example, four, two, six, two. Normally I do it more silently, but I want you to know that I'm actually doing it rather than freeze frame. Okay, um, we're gonna do some stretching again. We're gonna do three of these, breathing in, breathing out. Okay, have a go. Get rid of your inhibitions. This is what it's this week's all about. Stretch higher, stretch higher. I want to hear that ripping of cloth. Cool. One new one for today. I'm moving back because I have to stand up. Hope you can still see me. Five breaths. Okay, that will do this. The first breath goes to here and out. Second one, higher. Third one, fourth one, fifth one. Come on. Don't just wait till the video's over. Do it on playback. Do it now. Here we go. You're a giant bird made of air. Right to the top. Come on. Okay, there's another one tomorrow that involves doing that, but I thought I should warn you in case you have a big breakfast just before. <laughs> okay, always think about breathing. Okay, when you go out for a walk today, it's very windy today, at least here it is. <sighs> Enjoy that feeling, because that's that's what, what makes us work. Okay. Um, <sighs> most of you know what this is. Um, lip flapping, Andrew Porter said that he'd been, uh, hi Andrew and everybody, um, been walking around the house doing it. It's probably in, in the time of this virus, it's probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> so keep at least three meters distance. But we're gonna try five notes. <laughs> Stopping at the top is difficult, but let's try. <gasps> Okay, we're gonna try six in a line. All the exercises we do are progressionable. I'm sure you understand, even if you are from far away. Have a go. And if you're sitting there just going, don't worry. You gotta start somewhere. Two notes, three notes. So stick at it. You get a really good uh, vibration here. Great therapy, a little bit before and lots after you finish your practice session. Yesterday we did some exercises with the fingers. I hope you've been doing that. This is a process. It's not like, oh yes, suddenly I can do it. Um, and people asking, why am I using the left hand? Well, I am all about, uh, that sounds a bit stupid. I believe that it's important to have a good balance. Uh, I write left-handed and I kick a football when I used to with my left foot. Um, so I'm kind of mixed up. And I think that when we play an instrument, although most of the activity is here, I like to feel that this is just as flexible. So this for me, it's okay, of course, and that's how we practice our instrument. But this actually makes me feel better. So there was a nice question from uh, my friend in Catania. Thank you very much. Uh, so, we so work on the fingers, double tongue. Did you find some chopsticks? And more air.
Later on today, as you know, we're going to do some triple tanging. Okay, folks, take your mouthpieces. Um, we're going to start with a little bit buzzing. Remember, two fingers, good position. Good position here. You don't want to be playing down here, and you know why. Keep your eyes open. We've talked about that. <sighs> Maximize the airflow, everything open. One, two, three spaces. Today, we start with that three note triad. One, two, with me. Again. It's easier after the voice. You remember from day one? So we'll sing it and play it. And then you can transpose up or down. We don't have time to do huge long sequences of anything today because we are crammed with stuff. All your fault for asking so many questions. Uh, uh, but we'll do one more. Uh, that one. We sing it and we play it. Uh, It's a little baby musical instrument, okay? It's not an appendage, it's not a connecting tube. It's an extension of your voice into the instrument, and the instrument, especially the euphonium, will make it sound <laughs> incredibly beautiful. I know we have people of other denominations here, cornet players, horn players, trombone players. Brill, welcome. Excuse the odd comment about how wonderful the euphonium is. It's, it's, it's what, what we do. Okay. Um, you can extend that exercise. Okay, let's go back to the first note. So it's not just... We can build some nice tunes. Think like a musician now. Everything you do should have an artistic feel. So it's not just... What is that? Chopping wood, you know? it's <laughs> So... It's a voice. This is your voice. Listen once more and then we do it together. Let's go. Breathe. very good for your ear training okay so extend those and of course down when I mentioned the word transpose how did you get on with happy birthday to you especially beginning on F sharp my friend in Brazil Jefferson de Lima Sent me a video. Brilliant. I'm not sure if we'll have time to play them together. Um, definitely tomorrow we'll do those. Okay. So we're now going to play. Take your instruments. I'm in danger of talking too much today. Okay. Check your water. Check your posture. Check your left and right arm. Try and create a balance. Whether you're holding a flugelhorn or a cornet, and a tenor horn or euphonium, think about how you feel, because the way your air is going to leave your body has a strong impact because of how you are sitting. I've seen players playing like that, and when I said, hey, you know, what about this? It's like a tone control. Think about that as we do our warm-ups. We're going to start low. <laughs> in semitones to F sharp, tune it, euphoniums, two and four if you can, the rest of you, you know what to do, trombones, find that seventh position, together, quite a good sound, one, two, Well done. I say well done. 
say well done because I know that you're keen and you're passionate about that. This is why you're here. So that last note or those last two notes, yeah, they can get, they have a bit of a, a character of their own. They can, they can get a little uh, squirrely and angry. So you have, <laughs> and, and volatile, they can suddenly disappear. That giant glass trumpet of air going through your instrument. So let's just try the last two. Okay, together. One, two. Guys, we're going to do it once more. One space, two space, three space. Open, relax. Don't forget, take your best air. Here we go. One, two. Okay, we'll do more low tones when we do the pedal tone section coming up. This goes in my early morning routine. Tomorrow we're going to go through a complete structure of how you can start to now organize your practice based on all the good things that we're doing. So let's try this one together. Start on the low C treble clef. Here we go. Big breath. Smooth. Every tone good. One, two, three. Euphoniums keep going through the range. One four, one two four, all the way down to the bottom till we get to pedal C. Okay, now some more flexibility is coming up. So let's just think about this question that I posed. When does a warm up become practice? Well, somebody in Switzerland was doing a big research, and I just remember filling in a questionnaire about it, and it got me thinking. My warm up, probably in terms of warming up, is only five or six minutes. It's not 20. So I do a few things to get the lips moving, to get the air moving, and especially to prepare my mind to get what I call the zone. I love that feeling when I'm concentrated, I'm relaxed, and things are happening. If you're not used to practicing, it's hard to find that zone because you've got a million things on your mind. You've got kids in the other room. You've got all the stresses of this lockdown. You're thinking about your parents. You're and so music is a beautiful escapism and you can feel better. It's a therapy. It's obviously many um, things connected with yoga. Some teachers really stress yoga. So all the things we've done so far until this point, and it's 11.19 and I'm five minutes behind schedule, sorry, is all about being relaxed and strong and focused and positive. And on that basis, all the daily things that you do your finger exercises, your long terms, your flexibility, etc., etc., will become easier. So try and get into the zone. The warm up for me is really middle and low tones. I, before we started, I did some breathing here in the room. I buzzed on the mouthpiece for a few minutes. I played a few easy things and I'm ready. I'll probably play three hours this afternoon or four or maybe none if I get thousands of answers to the competition, but it's okay. I have no concerts for months. It's the most bizarre feeling. Um, but nothing inside my head changes. I still want to play good every day. I still want to be A1 positive. So I hope, you know, I hope I can engender that feeling to you also. Okay, so the warm up I like the things that we've done. And then when you start to go that's part of 
lot of a flexibility, but it's an early morning one. I wouldn't go straight to... Which I just did. I wouldn't do that uh, at the beginning. But I may do after 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So we ease in. So think about how a golf player would warm up. You know, I'm not a golfer. Never have been. My father was a pretty good one. But you know, there's this, isn't there? <laughs> Don't get up and start smashing the furniture. And there's this. And there's this. All these things we can do for, you know, for playing, but also for the golf swing. And before a golfer plays the tournament, they go on to the driving range and hit 200 golf balls. For us, yeah, different distances. That's our golf swing, okay? So think about that um, in terms of uh, how you would start the warm-up. Um, and then we will quickly go on to waking up the tongue, the fingers, and the flexibility, and then we can be creative with our practice and do what I describe as combination exercises, which we'll do a little bit later. So getting in the zone is important, and then getting your body and the space is open. I think we may have tried... Which you remember I called the chimney sweep it opens up the space and solidifies things okay posture is important okay remember all these things that we're doing don't start playing and think oh i wonder why it's not working today <sighs> this helps you get in the zone and helps you be strong and relaxed okay pimp up your warm-ups well make a list make a list of things that you want to do because if you just say oh what shall i do today oh let's do some tanging oh um, what about, uh, and that, that's the dilemma. Nobody sitting next to you and say, oh, good morning, John. Let's start with this, you know, uh, like, a, like a, a life coach. So you have to be your own teacher. So write down, make a list of what you want to do. You want to do your warm-ups. You want to do some low tones for the lips, some easy flexibilities, scales. See, people go, oh, I'm too old to play scales. No, you're not. Find a scale book and read them and then learn them and then play variations on them, and you will thank me. Maybe not now, or even next week, but soon. Range-expanding exercises. We're going to do some of those today. And we talked about... <sighs> with the pitched air, the R, and the O, and the U, and the E. I had a very nice question from Sarah about half an hour ago about how to use this big air at different dynamics. So that's on my list, Sarah, for one of the questions. Range expanding, tonguing exercises. Don't avoid single tongue practice if your tongue is slow. You have to do more. With and without the instrument. If it's 10 o'clock at night and you really want to play, but your neighbors would start banging on the wall, there are things that you can do. The finger exercises, exercises for the tongue, some breathing exercises, some stretching. It can always be a focus in your life rather than something, you know, oh, I'll just do it maybe tomorrow. You can play all the time, but you don't always have your instrument with you. I think you know what I mean. You need to work on dynamics. So make out a list of eight or ten of the most important things and i will write this down for you and put it on the club um, by tomorrow afternoon all the things you should do and then say right today i'm going to work on these three and tomorrow these three and then i'm going to work on these three and then in over three days you can cover everything you need to do and rotate them and don't just do the same exercises be creative you've got maybe two or three study books okay this section is good for this this is good for this okay yeah, well, that's tricky. Okay, I'll come on to that. Make a plan. You know, people say if you have a problem, write it down. Things get better. Well, there may not be a problem, but there may be things that you'd like to do better. So write them down and then think about how you're going to organize your practice session. And every exercise that you do is extendable, you know? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Some of them are harder than others. And arpeggios um, in different intervals. And you excited about the possibilities? Tell the rest of your family you won't be seeing them for a few weeks. Get in that practice room. Start making recordings. Energize yourself. And you'll be a much more happy and fulfilled person. I feel like a preacher. Oh my God, stop, Steve. Okay, buy a new study book or blow the dust off the study book somewhere under that cupboard that you haven't used for a while. Talk to people. What book would you recommend? What's good for this? I have from, you know, social media will give you, but you won't always get good answers on the internet. You know, there's lots of dodgy people out there giving you crap advice. Um, but, but talk to people. I mean, uh, talk to teachers, you know, talk to other players in the band that you respect. Think like a musician. That's good, isn't it? Think like a musician. Think like an artist. Be artistic in what you do. So when you go into your practice room and you get your music stand or you get your chair, it's not just like... No, it's like working on the road. It's like chopping rocks, you know? Feel good about it, that you're going to make some sound with the simplest little F and G march. <laughs> You can be adventurous at an A. So, think like a musician in everything you do. Care about your instrument. Clean it. Clean the inside as well as the outside. If your mouthpiece is not very good or is rough, get a new one. I know we live in difficult financial times, but mouthpiece is not that expensive if you don't think you're on the best mouthpiece then maybe that's a chance for you to think about that okay we're going to do some tongue and finger exercises together so let's take your instrument again and we'll go to the c scale and listen to this pattern <laughs> This is pretty clear. It's it's not certainly how I'd play it in a, an expressive piece of music, but as a mechanical um, mechanical test, this is very good. So listen again. And this is the sausage factory. Every note is a is a perfect sausage. <laughs> Every note is perfect. I don't want. Chuck them all out. They're all rubbish. Start again. So, let's work on that tempo. It's a little bit quick, but it's a combination exercise. One, two, three. Again. Okay, take away the sound, take away the buzz, and let's do air, tongue, and fingers like this. Now concentrate on how this and this are working together. When you're playing, you're, you're so busy listening to your sound, it's, it's kind of almost coincidental. Focus on... Absolutely fused together. One, two, air and fingers. Which is the slowest, your tongue or your fingers? It could be either. You may be... Maybe that's the problem. Maybe this, usually this. Like you're massaging the vowels. Okay, it's a machine. Ok, 
Okay, try it with me. First time we do that, second time we play. One, two, three. Let's play. One, two, three. I really hope that feels better. It should do. Now, let's transpose it. Transpose it to G major, treble clef G major. Don't forget the F sharp at the top. Let's play it. One, two, three, four. A little bit slower, so you can concentrate on the duality of that, that, all powered by that. One, two, three. Now if you play too short, It'd be like bones with no meat on. You really don't want to sound like that. So think a bit longer, not tenuto, but good sound. As you go higher, don't go louder. Not for this exercise. And be content with the job well done. Okay, it's not something you're going to play in a concert. I've never seen anything like that, exactly like that, in a concerto. But the, what it does in terms of how we think about making sound is super positive and has many uh, connotations elsewhere. Two octaves, my friends, starting on low G. Okay, I'll use that for three valve people. Listen. Have some air left, please, my friends. One, two, three. Okay, let's try the scale of A flat. Some of you may put your instruments down now and say, I shall sit this one out. No, you won't. You'll have a go. Put down two and three. If you're not sure what the fingering is, keep two and three down. <laughs> no. Okay. One, two, two octaves. Okay, so one octave, two octaves, start with the easy scales that you're comfortable with, and then slowly, da 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 scales like F sharp major. It's so good for you. It's another vitamin pill, a multivitamin for your musical system. Fantastic. Promise to talk about triple tonguing today. Triple tongue. Some people, again, like I said with double tongue and flutter tonguing and other little skills, people say, I can't do that, or it's rubbish, and, and therefore the book is closed. No. Open that book and think, why don't you like it? Like we did with with the uh, ye olde chopsticks and the double tongue. Now we're going into triple tonguing, but Probably not with the chopsticks. I'm not really sure why they're still there. I think I just forgot they were there. Two methods. You can choose either. When I was young, uh, the first really good lessons I had was from a fantastic cornet player called Glyn Bazanko. A beautiful player, cornet player with a beautiful sound. He could triple tongue. And I used to look at him and think, how are you doing that? And as a 12 year old, it was a mystery. And he said, look, or, and I tried the second one. I tried both, but one didn't work at all. So we naturally gravitate to one system. If you're a high brass player, low brass, horns down, d and g is our. You may have another system that works well for you. That's fine. But I prefer da ga. Now, I demonstrate both because I think it's important for me as a teacher to be able to 
do that. But it's what I've always used. So we've got to say it first, and then we transition to the instrument. Okay? So let's just try this. Choose either da 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 If you're not sure which, then just choose one. Okay? Copy this. da 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 Let's go. Three or four times. Now, maybe, I don't know where you are with this. Maybe it starts flipping into double time. So concentrate on threes. Try that with accent. It's a little bit like but that's okay for now. Okay, so if you have problem finding the first of each three, an accent will help. Okay. Very adventurous. Let's try it. And if for the moment you're going da 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 this sounds like you've been on the gin. And let's face it, who hasn't <laughs> these last few weeks? <clears throat> okay. Da 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 Tighten it up. It's a it's a double espresso. And let's put a tempo on that. Not too fast. One, two, three, four. Da 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 too fast, I hear you crying. Slightly slower. One, two, three. Try and keep the jaw still. I don't want. There should be no bouncing. Fix. Relax. Fix. Last time. Two, three. Am. Take your instrument, folks. Now, most people can speak that, maybe slightly, um, slightly slurred, but we have to transition to the instrument. And the way I found, and it's a little unorthodox, I haven't seen this in any book, I guess I have to write a book and then it will be in there, is to speak it into the instrument. So... <laughs> sing into the instrument not da -da 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 -da, but da -da 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 -da. it's going to feel weird no one's watching you unless you've got your family around going what are you doing now okay try one two three um. again now it, it's bizarre don't ever do that in public people say you're not supposed to sing into it you know <laughs> You're not supposed to sing into it, but this tonguing technique is good. <laughs> we can make a transition. Now, look what look what happens. Look what happens. This is a little bit of magic. <laughs> we can transition by blowing more air and allowing the lips to vibrate. So that's something you can try. We could spend a while doing that now, but... <laughs> is to go from the voice to the sound. So have a little play with that and see how you get on. Just short patterns. Stamina with triple tonguing is another game. You know, learning how to run, learning how to run 3,000 meters is different. So get the mechanism right. Da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> Simple notes, middle range notes, don't stress the range. Okay, good luck with that. Let me know how you get on with it. Okay, so we've done. We can also go. We well, could do a thousand things. Keeping strong, keeping the spaces, and keeping relaxed, and keeping your eyes open. To maximize the air. Let's try that together. Low C, middle G. One, two, three. Second vowel. Three, four. Okay, and keep going all the way down. Keep in tempo. Use 
one of these. You may have one on your phone. I have one on my phone, but if I used it now, I would disappear. Of course, as we go higher, it gets a little more difficult. So we need to stay relaxed. We do not need to squeeze our lips together. C, E, treble clap. One, two, three. Okay, let's just, I just had a sudden feeling that you may, you may have all gone, but there's 170 of you there, so <laughs> thank you. Let's try it again. Okay, big breath. Let's do this now. As if we're playing a march with a band, okay? And then second vowel, and then first vowel. And we're moving down chromatically, okay? This may not allow you to do all of them, but have a go with us, come on, you know? Get in the swimming pool, start swimming. One, two, three. Okay, well done, well done. You may have stopped before the end. Naughty. Keep going. Ba -da 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 -da. And the, the crotchet in the middle of the quarter note. Ba -da 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 ba -da 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 -da. Lengthen it. Because that ensures your air is good. As soon as you go, your lips get very confused. All they want to do is vibrate. Okay? Now, we're going to go to a higher range. Still two notes. Now, this is where most people stop playing flexibilities. Why, aren't, why don't you like that one? Because I'm rubbish at it. So that's why we should be doing it. How many times have I said that this week? E to G, treble clef. And then going down through the same finger combinations. Trust the chromatic combination. One, two, three. Well done, okay. So keeping a good sound on those is quite difficult. Okay, now if you're feeling adventurous and you say, yep, I warmed up before the session, I'm ready to go, we're going to try high G to high C. It's 11.44, come on, we should be ready for this. So what's that going to sound like? Have a go. If you really hate this and now you hate me, try an octave lower. One, two, three. Some of you, that's the first time this week you've gone, oh, bloody hell, I have to work on that one. Yes. And for some of you, it's like, I ain't even trying. Okay, but aspire to do all that stuff. And then we can... Once we've opened up the range by using two note patterns, then we can open up your Charles Collins flexibilities and say, you are now my friend, rather than... <coughs> Okay, next, uh, next. <laughs> Maybe slower than that.
multiple uses for a chopstick. Remember from day one? Use the pencil, don't forget to wash your hands. Okay, good luck with that. Long tones, and when you speak to the most traditional teachers, you have to practice your long tones. They don't always tell you why. It's just like, you've got to eat your greens. Well, we know why you have to eat your greens. But long tones are a little bit like that too. Two words came to my mind when I was thinking about how explaining the value of long tone practice, long note practice, stabilize, and a very interesting word, tranquilize. You become calm. And calmness for a musician, those of you that play in band contests, one of the primary things that you think about as you lead up to a contest, I'm gonna be nervous. Is it gonna be okay? Because I'm gonna be nervous. So there's a double function. There are more, of course, listening and tuning and, and tone, but stabilize here. And when we say a long tone, we don't just mean that's not a long tone. That's a warm-up exercise. It was an excerpt from the famous F and G march. 20 seconds, my friend. 20 seconds. Now, I'm going to show you 10, and then you can add the other 10 afterwards. sing it for 10 seconds that note and try and keep it without any uh, alteration unless you've got unless you've got a really sore throat singing is quite easy let's play that together now 10 seconds on a middle treble clef F at mezzo piano or piano, not less. Okay, let's keep it nice. One, two, breathe. Low C, 10 seconds, let's go. seconds let's go yeah I know that feels longer than 10 seconds because the air is different and we have to sustain that uh, greater cubic capacity of air so people say yeah but what long tones and how long and what should I do I have two exercises you can replay this in the, this video, of course, later if you forget. But the first exercise I've done for many years, these are all going to be long notes, don't forget. Each one of them can be 10 seconds or 15 or 20 seconds, depending on if you're playing a B-flat tuba, 10 seconds is fine. The rest of us, come on, we should really be able to, if, unless you've got a real... <coughs> problem with your lungs 20 seconds so it starts on the middle F sharp and goes alternately higher and lower okay if you're not sure write it down and I want you to become very calm so guys we're going to just play the first two and I've got a stopwatch over there, so I'm going to count 15 seconds per note. Trouble clef, F sharp, trouble clef, G. Each note, 15 seconds. Breathe after the first note. Stabilize it so it's the most beautiful, pure sound. You can color it with vibrato later, but let's keep it straight like it's just a bar of gold. Here we go. <laughs>
that's the beginning of our long journey. Now, if you say, yeah, I've done long terms, challenge yourself. 20 seconds. When you get to octave C's, it can be your first stopping point. Rest for a minute. Stretch the lips. We'll do more of this tomorrow. And then keep going alternately higher and lower. Each note, 15 or 20 seconds. And then take a rest. And if you want to go to the summit, if you're feeling really adventurous, used to talking to myself for so long in my room okay and uh, the other exercise you can do I realize we have a couple of things to talk about so far set the metronome at 72 and start to build up an F major scale no bad habits <laughs> time and hopefully after about um, worked out how many minutes you get to the last one an exercise I want you to try 72 when it gets really easy your metronome has other numbers that are lower and you can try 69 66 63 whatever you have so that's also progressive okay pedal tones pedal tones shouldn't be overdone but for me it's a really important part of practice It's our fundamental. It's the lowest open note. And we should train that, that we can sit on that with a big sound and not anything that has alteration. Okay, so let's, maybe you haven't played pedal tones. Let's try a pedal C, concert B flat together. Just a nice big strong note, about four, five seconds long. Make sure your tongue is low enough. Think or rather than ah. Ah. Your pitch will be too high. Think or. Hear the note. And let's do it once more. Great. Try them one after the other. I'm going to conduct you. One, two, three.
Now, if you did it, well done. If you find that your air is letting you down, focus on that and obviously not too loud in the beginning. Stability is the key. That lays foundation for everything you're going to do. Okay, so practice the pedal tones. There are many other benefits. Open throat space, relaxing, good space here, focus here. The air, of course. Works quite naturally. And that same technique. We'll scrub that one from the from the records. Wherever you're playing your range, work it from here. So pedal tones, a metronome will stop you from playing too quick. Control the pulse. vibrating and especially your nose is vibrating you're doing it well my friends okay competition time um, this is all on the euphonium club here is your chance today to be brave okay none of this none of what you send me is going to be made public but this is a chance for you to think about the things that we've done and think right I fancy a challenge I've got an hour free these are the, it's not really the rules. <laughs> it's not like the British Open. There's no registry. You have to, well, you have to sign your name, I suppose. That's about it. This is open to all who watch this online session just today, and it runs until midnight today. So you can start your recording immediately after this is finished, and I shall go to bed at 12, and I won't then listen to any more tomorrow morning. You need to record a video on your mobile phone of you playing the opening of the swan. So it's just the first, ba -da -da -dee 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 -dee. it's just the first couple of lines on the, uh, on the uh, Euphonium Club page. And send it to me, either by Facebook chat. It should be a fairly small video. It shouldn't be too big for the 22 megabyte limit. Or just email it. You find a way to do it. You know, don't bring it around in a paper bag and leave it on the step, you know, because I won't, I won't look at that. <laughs> Please take care of the following. Correct notes and rhythm. Most people know this. It's a very famous tune. Um, when I was in uh, in the Desford Band in 1984, 1984, I played this on the BBC Best of Brass. The video is still out there somewhere. When I had hair, and um, it was the Howard Snell arrangement, and um, I won a euphonium. So that little tune actually was very, very nice for me. The only problem is I had to play it in every band concert for the next six years. And there were times I wanted to get that swan's neck. <laughs> so, and then I left it alone for a while and came back to it. And it's a beautiful tune. So you all know it. Have a listen on YouTube. Find a cellist playing it. It'll probably be in a different key, so don't copy that. Um, but just the whole feeling. Just solo. We don't need accompaniment. If you find at the top C, is just too high you've got a bit more work but you can start you can transpose it it's okay sensible tempo try to make a good sound on all notes that's what we do but especially with a melody like this please try to play always in tune so if you go no you owe it to yourself to get these two lines as good as you can and if you're thinking, no, no, I'm not doing that, please have a go. Why not? You've got nothing to lose. There's no entry fee. And I will award some prizes, some pens and CDs and good stuff like that. And it's good for you. When you send it, you think, I'm pleased that I did that. Um, try to show nice long phrases. So, ba da, ba -di -di -da, but no. But not so fast that it sounds like this one is uh, at the races. Um, and show some artistry and musicianship. That can mean vibrato. It could mean a little bit of rubato. Don't do 
don't just think it has to be metronomic. Good luck, as it says on the form here. Three categories, 16 and under, 17 to 40, and 41 and over. There's no upper age limit. So if you're 112 and 115, I don't think you're in any way excluded. When you send your video, don't tell me your age unless you want to, but just say which category of age. I'll listen to them all day. I'll print names of everyone that's entered um, with a well done and then um, some prizes in each category. So I'd never run a competition like this before. There will be strict criteria judging based on the things that um, I have asked you to do, of course. Please only send one video. Don't send me eight and say choose the best one because I won't. I'll just delete them and make sure I can see your face so you're not miming to something you found on YouTube <laughs> accompanied by orchestra. It'll be suspicious. Um, so that's it. Have a go. I'll be happy to receive them anytime. Okay. Now, questions, my friends. I've got some important ones here. And I'll, I'll answer them really quickly because I'm aware it's we've just up for the hour. J Philippe, double tongue, high range, sound problem. Philippe, thanks for the question. So when he's double tonguing, well, it's a high note problem. But of course, the double tongue is exaggerating there. So I suggest you build up very slowly in ch checking the quality. And think it as melody and make sure that this space is not diminishing because that's the first thing that will happen. And the fast action of the tongue means everything can squeeze together. So your job is to keep it open. Jan Ove. He feels that he's wasting air. That's not a good thing, even though it's free. Don't waste it. And so he's worried that this space is too big. Well, it's the opposite of most people's problems, but normal size, small size, too big a size. Okay, so you need to do some exercises with something like this. Breathe in and out. And transition to the instrument. So if you're thinking, you're probably using a bigger space. So have something regulatory to help you to focus on that. Carlis said, is it good to practice with a practice mute? Many people are having to practice with a practice mute, maybe for the first time, because you are at home all the time, and so are your neighbors, and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, it is good to practice with a practice mute, but you have to be careful. You shouldn't play as if it's not there, and then play all your solos at full volume, because you will, even on the best practice mute, start to press harder. And then that starts to become compressed when the mute comes out you think, what the hell's been going on? And I've known one or two players have done some very serious damage. So if possible, practice without a mute. But you can use a practice mute, and I have two here. Exhibit A, my lord, is a gold SM travel mute. They're only available in red now. Sorry about that, but it's the same deal. Middle and low range is great for opening up these spaces. <laughs> I don't play many high notes. I use it when I'm traveling and I use it also at home when I feel I'm getting a bit tight. <laughs> People always say these mutes are out of tune. They're not. It's you that's out of tune because you go and then you go on Facebook and say, these mutes are terrible. Okay, so you can use that and it's great for traveling. Not that you can do that at the moment. Don't travel just so you can use your mute. Don't use me as an excuse. 
or this big camping toilet, uh, sorry, um, blank practice mute. The di most difficult thing is getting it in, especially when you're sitting like this. Okay. So think about how you practice a scale here. Listen to try and get a good sound, even with a quiet mute. So whatever mute you have, a, a wooden mute, um, if you're a trumpet player, you may have a harmon mute. It may not be the quietest mute so that you can practice at midnight, which I know you want to do now. But use it sensibly. Don't be aggressive with the mute because the aggression usually will result in you getting a flat upper lip, which can then affect your production, which then affects your positivity and your uh, joy and happiness of playing an instrument because you feel you're fighting the instrument. So use it as a throat opener. Use it to move air against some resistance, which of course there is, and practice your technique softly. Very rare will I really open up on one of those. There's no point unless I'm really playing pedal tones. Thomas, how to get better very high notes. Well, hi Thomas, if you're watching, one of my students. We talked about R uh, and OO. <laughs> And then we talked about the E sound, E, E, double E, in terms of the vowel sound. So really work as you go up about thinking those vowel sounds. So if you're... Um, think about that sound. me on directly to a question from Sarah about quality air fast air what about dynamics well if we think of pitched air Sarah and everybody I'm getting myself in the right position with quality air that has a pitch if I want to play louder I keep that position and I use more air I do not go to get the volume. The lips just want to vibrate. Okay, and if I'm playing low, that's why low tone and pedal tones are so good because we have to direct more air at that same flavor, the same pitch through your instrument. same position this is in the same position so it's quality air for the dynamic with the tongue in the right placement if your tongue is too low I don't even demonstrate it the high notes are going to struggle if the low notes have a tongue that's too high they're never going to center themselves or ah, ooh. and I've heard that trumpet players think of ah, ooh, e. they have no or sound I hope that makes sense. Please experiment with those vowel sounds and try some notes of pitch with different dynamics. You'll see that it's all about using the correct air. Mike talked about the egg. We talked about the egg analogy, the space inside your mouth. Um, yes, euphonium conical instruments, vertical egg. We talked about the trombone being more horizontal because the instrument is more cylindrical. The airflow is different. Yes, of course, the baritone should be similar to the trombone. So if you go from baritone to euphonium, baritone to bar bar baritone to baritone. Hello, Steve. Baritone to trombone. <laughs> An egg? Sure, it has to be. Otherwise, <sighs> horizontal, tuba euphonium. And if you've never thought about that concept before, 
when you play your long tone exercises or your arpeggios, imagine a hard boiled egg. I didn't mention what kind of egg, but yeah, fried egg, no good. Hard boiled egg standing upright inside your mouth. It'll affect your voice as well. So do some vocal exercises with, with flat, no space. The instrument is an amplifier. The lips just make the frequency here instead of here. Don't want to make it sound too complicated. Roberts asked me how to wash your instrument. Well is the answer. So what does that mean? Um, do wash it, especially on the inside. The outside is just for other people. The inside is for you to sound good. Um, I, have, I, I haven't done any plugs about my shop. Um, oh, I just did. Um, Euphonium store. Dot net. We have a cleaning kit and we have solutions that you can put in a, a bath of hot water, take all your tubes and valves out, let it soak for an hour, and then a lot of the dirt just falls out. You can rinse it through. You can especially brush through here, make sure the valves are out. And this is where most of the dirt collects. That will affect, if this gets blocked, it will affect your high range. Your high range notes will become flat. And if you think my high notes are always, not mine, your high notes are always flat, and then you think, when was the last time you cleaned your lead pipe with a brush? If the answer is never, or I can't remember, that's why. Okay, so soak it first, loosen up all the pizza and stuff that's been in there for years, brush it out. Rinse it all. Don't do that too often. I would do that, that, that kind of clean every two months. Two months, you say. I've never done mine. There's no badge of honor <laughs> for that. So keep your instrument clean. Um, Kate. Flutter tonguing. It's, it's one of those that you can or you can't, actually. But we'll talk about that tomorrow in the class. Um, Sarah, when I play a high, a long note, it starts to wobble and fail and sound like a raspberry. I've got raspberries in the fridge. They make no sound at all. But I think I know what you mean. So you need to practice. Sarah, um, start with units of five seconds. 10 seconds, 15, keep strong here, keep your eyes open and think of quality air. You will notice an improvement on a daily basis if you concentrate on it. Um, Lon asked about switching between brass instruments. It's easy if you stay in the same family, baritone, euphonium, trombone, you can use the same mouthpiece. Generally speaking, trombone players use one size smaller mouthpiece, I'm on a four. Uh, trombone players will often use a five or a six. If you're a second trombone player, you may use a four as well. But going between a, a three mouthpiece for your euphonium and a six for your baritone, that starts to get a bit more of a jump. If you're going between soprano cornet and B flat tuba, your name has to be James Morrison. Otherwise, you really shouldn't. Unless you're one of those kind hearted people that will just help out any band on any instrument, in which case you have my blessing and congratulations. Um, Brian, combining double and triple tongue. And just do that until you get bored with it, okay? Helen uh, asked about a mouthpiece. She has a six for trom on a euphonium. What about the trombone? If you're happy with your six mouthpiece on a euphonium, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Some mouthpieces designs in terms of outer metal are a little bit more suitable to a euphonium sound than a trombone. Heavy top stuff for a trombone is very positive and can direct the air. Not quite so great for me, heavy top on a euphonium. We lose some of that color uh, and beauty. And uh, Sarah, I asked your question, answer your question about fast air. <sighs> it's 12.15. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your passion to play a brass instrument. And I uh, hope you've got some good ideas. You can always, I shall try and save the video today so I don't have to rewind and re-record like I had to do yesterday, which is why yesterday's YouTube video is not synced properly with the sound. Good luck with the competition. I know you can't wait for me to go away so you can start practicing the swan. Practice it as many times as you want but only send me one video. Don't send me a hundred and say, I'm sure there's one there with a top C in. Thank you, my friends. Have a wonderful day. Structure your practice. Try to find that calmness. 
and that in the zone that'll mean all the things that we've been talking about work better for you we have one more session tomorrow i really look forward to it we'll do some fun things tomorrow some multiphonics some lip bending um some lip trills some flutter tonguing the art of melody playing we'll hear happy birthday in four different keys and i'll answer more of your questions ciao ciao bye bye